Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to do number six. I think episode number six in the Buck Converter series. And this one's going to be using MicroCap. So I'm going to show you the schematic that I have in the MicroCap. You can play around with it. You can get a free a copy of the schematic. Just send me an email. I'll send you a copy. And yeah, let's just jump over and take a look at it. All right, so I have this Buck Converter drawn up. And here, let me come over here and hit the auto scale just hit that and it kind of blows it up to the maximum size now let's just look at the circuit the inputs on the left vn it's 13 volts comes through this resistor which is a sense resistor and i'll show you that in just in a moment uh now this part right here is a switch this is simulating a fat this is just a easy way to simplify the simulation and then later you can put the fat of choice in there but this is more of an ideal fat okay and it's activated by this plus minus terminal this is like the gate drive of the fat and then this is a fat switch so i'll just click away and that's what it looks like on the schematic okay so it says v drive right here and here's return or ground all right so and this is a switchy node and over here we're going to call this transistor node okay between the sense resistor and the transistor and then we have our inductor and this is our dc resistance of the inductor it's just kind of brought out so we can uh, look at those things separately and then we come out to our v out which is tied to the r load of 0.5 ohms and then we are our c out so 727 microfarad and look it has IC 4.5 so let me click on that and show you that it's up here the value and down here and what that is when I hover over it you can read down below and it's the initial condition it starts off with 4.5 volts that's so that we start a simulation we don't have to wait for this thing to charge it runs so faster we want to watch startup time then we can put that to zero to watch that and here's the ESR of the capacitor, just like we had the DC resistance of the inductor. So they're broken out separately as well. And then here's our return across here. When I just hover over that, it highlights the whole thing. And here's our flyback or our diode right here. So uh, during the off time, right, the diode helps the inductor continue flowing current. Okay, now this guy right here is our sense this is current sense now the way we do that is see this right here this thing right here is it's looking at the voltage from input to transistor and up here is input to transistor so it's looking at the voltage across that resistor that's why i call it a sense resistor so it's looking at the current value as it goes to that resistor so it develops a voltage on the 100 milliohm comes down here and ends up right here as a voltage we get a little triangle voltage here and then we come up here and go into the oscillator okay i'm going to change this value it was set up that way by default and i dropped it down to 100 milliohms okay now this stuff right here this is our feedback this is our compensation okay so our feedback comes right through this resistor see this from our output so we've got a voltage divider between this r11 and r6 they're the same value so the voltage is divided by two and it's fed in to the feedback pin that's one pin of a, an op amp essentially and the output of the op amp is a compensation pin so we'll see that what they call the voltage error because whatever the difference between the reference voltage tied to the other pin of the op amp and whatever voltage this is we'll see this as negative feedback trying to drive this pin back to equalize the other pin the vref pin and up here this is for high frequencies and this uh, provides a little bit lower frequency pull roll off so okay so we'll look at that once we do a simulation and i think i think we're probably ready to do that so let's go ahead and do it we're gonna go to analysis 
we're going to come down this probe transient. It's like this it's like this transient analysis up here, except for this one allows us just to kind of, you know, like right here. See, I got my voltage probe. You see the voltage tied to the arrow. And I come over here and just click on that. And it gives me that 13 volts. Okay. Now, if I come over to the output, we can see what the output is. And look at the output. It kind of comes up, overshoots a little bit, settles down, and holds steady. Okay, looks like it's about five volts. All right, so what we can do is go to the switchy node. We always like to look at that. And look at that. So up here, switchy node is really wide. It's on for a long time. I'll go ahead and zoom in on that. See, on for most of the time, off for a little bit, on for a little bit you know, most of the time. So it's trying to charge up that output. Let's zoom back out. And then once the output starts ramping up, then it's going to more 50% duty cycle through here. Then it overshoots, and then actually look how narrow the uh, on time gets. Very narrow, because it's overshot, and it's waiting for it to settle back down. Okay, and what we can do is we can come up here and look at the current through our sense resistor. Let's go vertical and go to current and watch that. And look at that. Now we have some noise spikes. That's all these spikes up here. So we want to kind of ignore that, I guess. Uh, let's zoom in on, you know, let's just zoom in this range, this region right through. Well, let's just zoom in right through here. Okay, so ignore these little spikes up here. That's just noise. But you see, here's our 50% duty cycle. See the little vertical current rise? Here's we're uh, charging that inductor out there. And then right through here, it's kind of trying to turn off because it's overshot. And then it starts to try to regulate through here. So it's coming back up again. Okay, here, let me zoom out. And you know, we could look at the current through here because this might be filtered a little bit better through the inductor. Yeah, look at that. So that looks a little bit cleaner, right? Let's turn off this one. Now, one thing before I do that, um, that current, the current sense comes through this part of the circuit down here and gets fed into the sense. But see this RC filter? So that's going to clean up those spikes. So see the black line looks very clean, right? So here now let's go turn off this current through R9. Let's come down in here and say delete uh, curves. And let's delete R9. Okay, so it auto corrects the Y axis, which gives us a more zoomed in view of the waveform. That's why I got rid of that. Now look at this, the current stair steps, what we call stair stepping in this because it's going on real wide off just a little bit so it doesn't have much time to discharge and then it charges right back up, charges right back up. So that inductor is continuous, you know how we've been talking about continuous versus discontinuous. Now look at this, this is running nicely and then once it overshoots then it's like oh okay and it starts to turn off so it stair steps down real quick and then it catches and then it tries to regulate and then it comes up and now it's regulating up in here so uh, we could kind of clean this up by adjusting our compensation circuitry over here uh, you know there's another thing I want to show you is you notice right here the voltage you may have noticed how the voltage drops down on the switching node that comes up. Where you think the switching node, it should be when the transistor's on, we should see that 13 volts right here, right? Starts off there, but as current starts coming through this resistor, we lose some voltage. So that's what's happening. And you can see that if we look at the voltage across that resistor here, let's look at that. Go back to my voltage probe, click on that. And you can see, see that voltage come up on that resistor? 
So every time it turns on, we're getting a pretty good current pulse. So we're seeing some voltage drop across that resistor. That's why we're losing voltage across our switching node. So when we do those calculations out here, we have to take into account any losses to our transistor or if we have a sensor resistor like this, that. And that's why we might want to make that value smaller. Okay, there's something else I want to show you. Someone asked a question about how do you look at power? Now, and they and they didn't see the option. See, I have voltage current here. Look, I have energy, I have power, I have everything, right? And the reason I have all these highlighted and they're not grayed out, so if I want to look at the power on that resistor, I can click on that, and now I got my power probe, I can come over and click on that. And then it asks, you know, whether it's the input or output of the resistor. So I can just, well, let's just select them all, just see the difference, okay? So there you go. Uh, I'm gonna delete all the other curves. So let's show you how to do that again. Come delete. Let's delete all these curves except for the power curves. The, the pin down here, there's no power down there because it's reference ground. So it's down here. So that's what it's gonna look like if you say the source pin versus like the drain pin. So, and then up here is uh, the power from here to ground. So you see the power across here. Now the reason I could do that and if you don't see these things highlighted is because if you come over here to probe and you come down here when you run your simulation I say save all and then it captures voltage, current, power, everything. If you go here you only get voltage and current. So that's the trick. Okay. All right, well, hope this gives you a circuit so you can play with it and you can play with the voltage, the, the inductor, the output, you know, you can play with the capacitor, you know, you can play with these values. You can start just kind of tweaking things. Save the original circuit so you can always go back to it, but there you go. That gives you something to play with. Have fun. All right, so what do you think of that? Um, Hope you like it. You can get a free copy. Hey, by the way, uh, before we go further, I want to give a big two thumbs up to my patrons. I really appreciate your guys' support. And I appreciate all you guys supporting the channel, watching the videos, giving a thumbs up. Free way to support it. Really does help. YouTube analytics, just smash the like button if you don't mind. Uh, if you like the video, of course. But anyway, we're what we're going to do is the next video, I'm going to actually show you how to design the buck converter and it'll be something that you can scale for whatever voltages you want yeah i mean within reason what a buck converter can do okay so all right anyway now you got a spice simulation smack that you can play around with the values and just kind of get a good feel for what's happening all right hope you like that and i hope that was valuable and for people that are just trying to learn microcap i hope this is valuable for you guys too because it's kind of another tutorial in a way that I just kind of showed you how it works. I didn't really go into a lot of microcap tutorial stuff, but it's just, you know, redundancy, right? Just using it over and over. So, and if you haven't used it and you're interested in this buck converter and you want to simulate it, the microcap software used to be 4,700 bucks a couple years ago. Now it's free. So awesome. So download it. And I've got a, uh, the link down below for that too. Okay. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. See you next time.